Good morning, everybody. This morning, I'd like to talk to you about the URD CARES IURD UG system. Now, as I previously explained, I'm unable to be present uh, at the conference this year due to medical reasons, but hopefully this pre-recorded uh, slide presentation will uh, suffice to give you a better overview of the purpose and functions of the URD CARES IURD UG system. So this presentation will follow four basic sections. We'll talk about the basis for the IURD UG system. Why do we have it in the first place? And the purpose, what purpose does it actually serve? Its features and benefits, and then spend a little time looking into the future of the system. Now I'm well aware that some of you here today are probably very, very familiar with the purpose and function of the system. You've probably been using it for years, but I'm quite sure that there are others who have far less understanding. Um, this is uh, the result of the very uh, rapid turnover in staff in airlines these days. Very often the knowledge that uh, the people had for using our system has disappeared as people have retired or been transferred. And so it makes good sense to spend this time uh, at least bringing everybody up to the same level of knowledge. So let's start by looking at the basis for the IULD UG system. Why do we have it in the first place? Well, it all rests on the IATA Multilateral Interline Traffic Agreements, or META. This is an agreement where passengers and cargo can move from one airline to another smoothly with standardized documentation, standardized practices. This can be done 24 seven, wherever it happens around the world. This is one of IATA's initiatives. They have the multilateral interline traffic agreement with over 350 participating members. So as we get into the meter, chapter one, we find that section 1.2 is the interline traffic agreement cargo. So now we're starting to narrow it down into the cargo and ultimately the URD function. And within this section, we find 3.2.3.7 unit load devices, where it says very clearly, a unit load device which has been transferred remains the property of its owner. The receiving airline shall return such unit load device to the transferring airline and the transferring airline shall be entitled to a signature from the receiving area, airline on a receipt for such transferred unit. So there you have it. In the meter agreement is a very, very clear definition of how the transfer of ULDs as part of an interline transfer shall be accomplished. Well, of course, you might want to ask, why interline cargo in the first place? Why not just fly it there yourself or only accept cargo to destinations that you fly to? Well, we all know that's probably not a very good approach to the cargo industry these days. But no airline can reach every destination in the world, or even if they could, they certainly wouldn't do it every day of the year. So all the airlines need some kind of relationship, partnership with other carriers in order to get their cargo to the final destination. And I talked to a, a few airlines in this regard to try and discover just how big a part of their cargo activities um, interlining is. And uh, I was interested that um, it seems to be around 20 to 30 percent of at least some carriers total cargo um, carriage is actually interlined cargo. So it's a very significant part of at least some airlines operations. So what purpose does the IULD UG serve? Well, every time unitized cargo is interlined, the ULD goes with it. And then how is the owner of that ULD able to protect his ULD asset against overdue return, loss or damage? The ULD IULD UG system is one, and I would argue is the most efficient way 
to manage this situation. So how is this all set up? Well, back in the 1970s, the UOD control manual was created, an IATA document. This hasn't been revised for considerable years. This is the latest edition, dated uh, March 2000, but it is still perfectly adequate for the purpose it serves because the basic principles of interlining have not changed and are unlikely to change in the near future. Essentially, the UOD control manual is a document that lays out all the functionality and the guiding principles by which ULD transfers are accomplished in a disciplined, defined manner. And here, extracted from the ULD control manual, is the basis for the whole uh, operating system. The parties here too operate scheduled airline transportation services and desire to introduce standard procedures for the interline handling and control of carrier-owned unit load devices to ensure the return of such ULDs to the owner carrier. That's it in black and white. And uh, the whole discussion we're having this morning is about nothing more and nothing less than that function. So to put this in plain English, what is the IULD UG? Well, first of all, a couple of knots. One, it is not a ULD management system or control system. Absolutely, it is not. And it's not a ULD rental or supply operation either. No, the ULD Care IULD UG system is the global community platform for recording the transfer of ULDs between member airlines. There it is in black and white. So, some vital statistics. The IULD UG system has its earliest members dating back to 1971, so almost 50 years, and has over 50 member airlines. Processes around 35,000 transactions per year, which equates to about 17,500 interlines, because there's a transaction in and a transaction back out. And it's currently in its uh, second generation as far as the actual uh, processing of the transactions from a technical point of view. What's the key to the system's success after all being around for 50 years? First of all, it's trustworthy. The uh, members trust each other because there's nothing to be gained one way or the other. It's a mutual system. Uh, nobody can uh, make a a, uh, an advantage over another member through the system. It's run in a not-for-profit community activity. Basically, all the um, charges for using the system are simply there to cover the operating costs and perhaps put a little into the reserves for future developments. And it does have a very long history, which must count for something, 50 years. So uh, it's... Um, it seems to be a, in a very sustainable situation. But like any system, we have challenges. I'd like to list out three here. Maintaining and increasing our user base, and we'll talk about that in more detail in a moment. Keeping pace with technology. Of course, any system like this re relies on IT and we've got constantly changing situations and remaining financially sustainable. The IULD UG system depends on its network of users. If we just had one member, it would be completely useless. If we had just two members, it would be pretty well useless. So clearly, the more members we have, the more uh, effective the system is. And that's something that we need to keep in mind all the time. Interlining from a member to a non-member or from a non-member to a member requires that the whole process be handled manually outside of the system. It involves emails, it can involve disagreements about uh, demurrage and all the other functions that come as part and parcel of the IULD UG system. Next, we need to consider financial sustainability. UOD Care, as you all know, is a not-for-profit organization. And so 
The system is basically run on the basis of covering its operating costs, so long as we can cover those and put a little bit into our reserves for future developments, we're happy. The new system, whenever it comes, will undoubtedly require some investment and that could be a challenge. Another area that we've done very well at is maintaining the transaction fees, which are $1.50 per transaction. These have remained unchanged for a very long time indeed, in fact, uh, many, many years. So let's now take a look at the features and benefits of the IULD UG system. For those of you, again, who may be very familiar, this can be a refresher. For those of you less familiar with the system, you can hopefully learn something new. IULD UG is all about managing your ULD assets. Because every time you interline a ULD into another carrier, you have basically lost visibility and equally Every time somebody interlines their ULD into your system, you probably have no visibility. And you could, unknowns to you, be clocking up massive demurrage bills. Also, when it comes to lost units, the industry uh, appears to lose about 3% of its ULDs per year, which is probably around 30,000 units. How many of these are simply interlinings that never got properly recorded and the unit is simply sitting somewhere unknown to everybody. And on top of that, how many units don't return after the five day grace period? The, uh, the uh, agreement allows member airlines five days to return an interlined ULD. How many take weeks or even months to return? And let's talk about the marriage. Money talks. Libraries have fines for overdue books. Car owners, you get a ticket for overstaying your time on a parking meter. Businesses will get fines or interest charges for late payment of bills. And if you delay paying your income tax or property tax, you'll also get charged a surcharge. So it's a global phenomenon. People need to be incentivized by some kind of financial penalty. So here we come with the IULD UG deliverable number one. The owner of any ULD whose transfer has been recorded through the system has a cast iron case to collect the marriage and non-return fees from the counterparty if they choose to do so. No ifs, no buts. IULD UG deliverable number two is it gives you enormous transaction visibility. Essentially, once a transfer is entered into the system, you have a complete history available to you. The uh, system delivers real-time lists, weekly reports, and monthly reports, enabling any operator who understands the system to get a accurate, reliable snapshot of all their interline transactions, both of where their units have gone to and how long have they been gone for, but also of the units that have been interlined into their system and how much at risk they are of being charged with the marriage. In this screenshot, you have a picture of only units transferred. So for any particular airline, and the uh, airline names have been blurred out here, he can see, looking at this screen, at any one point in time, which of his units have been transferred out to another carrier and how long ago that occurred, how many days the units have been out. So he's got a very, very clear picture. And in this report, it's working the other way, foreign units transferred to you. So again, the participant can see when units have been transferred from a different carrier into his system and of course this one is particularly critical because go beyond the five days you could be up for demurrage. In fact you can see that some of these have got some pretty lengthy days. We've got uh, one some units at 87 days and uh, others at two days. So this one is a very critical report. And as we said earlier money talks. 
And in this report, you have a matrix, airline members down the column, airline members across the top. So reading across, an airline can see how much demurrage it is owing to other carriers and reading down how much demurrage it is receivable from other carriers. So this is a very quick way of knowing whether you're ahead or behind. And if you uh, look at uh, the whole uh, membership of the IULD EUG, there are some airlines that are hugely in uh, deficit and other airlines that are hugely in credit. But I will make a point here, which is that at the end of the day, it uh, all comes out in the wash. So what airlines owe, the other airlines receive and vice versa. There is no profit or no uh, fee or charge on the demurrage that ends up in the coffers of your care. As I said earlier, dollars talk. The accumulated demurrage, all members, year to date in 2019, is approaching 750,000 US dollars. If we take $10 a day as an average, this equates to 75,000 UOD days or 203 UOD years of time. And that's time over the five free days that UOD have been away from their owner in eight months. So it seems to me, looking at these statistics, uh, a lot of URDs are spending a lot of time in other carriers, which is perhaps not the way things should be working. But the threat of demurrage is what encourages these units back home, provided, of course, that the member airlines are doing a job of issuing their demurrage invoices. Why would you not be a part of IULD UG? Well, is it the cost? Personally, I don't think so. An annual membership fee of $1,050. This is hardly an extreme amount of money. And a transaction fee of $1.50. Now, okay, sometimes the transaction fee gets raised. So I like to consider the IULD UG system as insurance. And use this example. If you take 500 units that you transfer out in a year, then your total cost is going to run at... Uh, 1050 plus 750 transaction fees which is going to be 1800 US dollars a year. Now those 500 units have a replacement value of about half a million dollars. So if we look at this as insurance then the premium as a percentage of the uh, asset value insured is 0.36 percent. Now I'm not an expert on insurance but from what I know that's a pretty reasonable insurance premium to pay, 0.36% of the value of the asset that you're insuring. So uh, really, I think the transaction fee is actually a very reasonable number. So is the IULD UG system complicated, difficult to use? Do you need to have a master's degree? The answer is no. The system itself is really very straightforward and very easy to use, and it comes with a very very comprehensive user manual okay we could always improve it a little i'm sure but overall it's pretty straightforward the problem here mainly is the data entry is antiquated it's you paper-based URD control receipts coming from generally quite unreliable third parties and this is where the system does struggle to to operate at its most efficient and let me also make some clarifications about the uh, way the system works. First of all, URD Care and the IULD UG system, we do not process any kind of financial transactions. We create the data, we calculate the demurrage, but it's up to our members to use that to collect demurrage from the other members at their discretion. You don't have to invoice somebody else, but if you choose to do so, then it's your job to issue them the invoice. The system is also not connected in any way to the IATA Clearinghouse. That's uh, a, uh, a misunderstanding that uh, exists in some airlines. Again, all invoicing, which is generally done through the Clearinghouse, is uh, done manually by the airline. Yordi Care also doesn't... Um, act as some kind of a referee if there's any kind of a disagreement between airlines 
that's up to the airlines to sort out between themselves. The system provides a very good, clear report of all the transactions um, and uh, any kind of disagreements is between the airlines. And of course, interlining not only applies to the transfer of built up ULDs, but when ULDs empties or courtesy moves are being uh, carried out, they can also be uh, uh, entered and processed through the IULD UG system. The only difference being is the use of the ZZZ code, which means that um, there is no demerge charge. So what's coming next for IULD UG? Well, probably our biggest challenge is to maintain and extend our membership. As I pointed out earlier, if airlines forget the value of using the IULD UG system, it will slowly degrade. And on the other side, as new airlines appear or airlines that were small get bigger, we need to encourage them into the system. It's in everyone's interest for IULD UG to cover the entire industry. And I'd like to make a plea here to all our members to work with the uh, with the board of directors to help us bring uh, bring in the missing pieces of this jigsaw. We have some ideas, trial memberships, promotional material from uh, ULD Care. We're open to other ideas as well. But uh, we really encourage all our members of the IULD UG system to identify those airlines that they interline with that aren't yet members and then work together with us to encourage them to join. It's all about digital these days. Increase connectivity. Let's replace the paper, your D control receipts, lux and mux, CETA messages. This is all antiquated. The future for the IURD UG system lies very much in moving away from uh, all this paper based stuff and getting towards smartphone or even smartwatch. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this presentation uh, of value. Again, I apologize for not being present in person, but I hope this pre-recorded presentation has done the job in, as well. And of course, you will be able to download it uh, from the website after the conference. So maybe that's an upside. Um, we will also have a couple of users up on stage to uh, give you their inputs on their the value they get from using the IULD UG system. And on Thursday afternoon, there will be a workshop. This is an experiment. It's the first time we've done it, but we hope it'll be an opportunity for users to share some of their questions and uh, hopefully get answers from their colleagues. Again, thank you very much.